What's going on people, welcome back to another video. My name is Uizy e, and you're watching 90 More back again after West Ham's Declan Rice gave the Hammers a 1-0 win against Arsenal at the London Stadium. There's quite a lot I want to get through today because the temperature is rising. Uh, we're going to be getting to the game obviously, but with so many different opinions flying around about where we stand as a club, the direction that we're going in, the mess that they've left behind, the old regime. Oh, it's all this, and oh, Ramsey that. We're going to get into all of it today, well, as much as we can, uh, because very quickly, everything has gone from being rosy as you like, everyone being so unified, and seeing eye to eye for the first time in God knows how long, and just brimming with positivity in general, to, well, it's exactly what it was a minute ago, isn't it, really? Everyone arguing, comical defending, memes online, People blaming this guy, that, but the people blaming the board. But we will start with the lineups because Unai Emery is at it again. It's almost like the guy, I don't know, is he a bit scared or is he just inviting the pressure? He is inviting the pressure on himself in so many ways. Three at the back. Okay, okay, fair enough. That means... You don't trust anyone, but do you trust yourself? Because it's obviously not the formation that you prefer. In terms of your career, it's a 4-3-3, isn't it? But, okay, fair enough. Defensively, you have been brought in to fix things, right? To stabilise the ship, as they say. It hasn't really happened yet, has it? And looking at the team, it's basically seven defenders. Two midfielders in Xhaka and Guendouzi, which, as a midfield, I'm just... I'm almost certain... That's not it, Chief. Herrera on the bench, who's pretty much the best thing that's happened to us for quite some time. Ramsey on the bench. Ozil not even in the squad. So I can only assume that Ozil's Instagram, where he's posting about having completed a full week of training, is some kind of show of defiance to let the whole world know exactly what's going on. How are you managing to alienate our best players while simultaneously benching the others? Once again... We are entrusting Premier League football, starting 11 at the Arsenal Football Club, with Granit Xhaka and Guendouzi as the midfield. Guendouzi, obviously, we've said this before, he has the potential to be an elite midfielder. There is no denying that in my eyes. There's also no way that he's ready for this kind of responsibility. You can almost guarantee that he is going to make a mistake in a full 90. Almost guarantee that these managers are actually telling their players, go out and snap that little kid. Snap him. Yeah? On the first touch, quickly. Make him work. He will crumble under a little bit of pressure. He's so confident. But there's no way that that's not happening. Boss man, boss man, boss man. Is this anywhere near our best sign-up? I am no Premier League manager, and I pretend not to be. But boss... <laughs> Is this our best lineup? I'm a little bit lost when I see this lineup. The Ozil situation is interesting. First things first, do you think that anyone else in their right mind is going to take Ozil on 350 grand a week right now? The answer is no. Do you also realise that one of the club's most valuable assets is currently depreciating at a rapid rate with every single minute that he doesn't spend on that football pitch? I hope you do. It's almost like he wants to cause a rift. Or is that just me? I don't know. I'm not talking about Twitter here or YouTube or, you know, a pundit feed or anything like this. But footballers, right? They respect Meza Ozil. Ozil is a well-respected guy. Not Twitter trolls and, you know, the, the, the run hard crew. You know, the, the Brexit, Brexit fans. Not these guys. Actual footballers. People that play the game. People that understand the game, they respect him. They respect his achievements. Some of them look up to him. And you can see at this club that he is one of the most centrifugal parts off the pitch, let alone on it. And then I always thought that tactically to unlock a tight, deep defence in the Premier League, as you see so often, you would need a creative source. Tell me, Manchester City, how many do they have? Tottenham, Ericsson. Every club has them. Even Watford have one. You need someone who is either quick enough or 
you know, capable of taking a man on to open up the space or has the vision to split what's in front of them. Who exactly is doing that in our side? Who has the ability to control a game? Debatably, right, with Torreira, Ramsey and Ozil out of the side, you're missing three of your starting 11. And then I'm hearing people saying, oh, but Ramsey doesn't fit the system. Oh, but, but Ozil doesn't fit the system. Ozil doesn't work hard enough for Emery. Bro, <laughs> that's not it. That's not it, lads. Come on now. It's common sense here, right? It's actually common sense. Mesut Ozil, 350k a week, is not getting in the team. <laughs> He's not getting in the team. Do you, do you see, or, I mean, we're playing Gwendozi in a position ahead of Ozil. Let's think about this rationally for a second. We're playing Ewobi. And there's no disrespect to those guys, but common sense would tell you that something is amiss. There is definitely more to this than me. You don't leave out an Ozil like this unless you're trying to make a point to the rest of the players, to the club, or to Ozil himself. It's one of those three, unless Mesut Ozil has some kind of other stuff going on right now that he's not letting on up on about and the fact is from the evidence that we've got the instagram posts the training the omissions the excuses something's not adding up and what you're doing by alienating one of the most popular in the clique by benching another of the most experienced is losing two absolute game changers who are ironically enough helping to plug that gap in midfield that was just so evident today right I have two very underwhelming coaching badges and I could see exactly what Pellegrini was doing and it was fucking blatantly obvious and he didn't react. He did not do anything until it was way too late. Arsenal under Unai Emery, we started the season all raring to go, fit, everyone's hungry, everyone wants to fight for their position. We're looking like some kind of, we've got some kind of physical advantage over people. That's all gone now. We are slow, we are scared, we're incredibly frustrating to watch. And we played too patiently out of the pack. It's very predictable. Spreading things out wide, side to side, so we overload the attack, especially down the left-hand side. Very dependent on Iwobi and Kolasinac. So, since Bellerin's been out to eliminate Arsenal, you just stop the left. Right? If you eliminate the left, you stop Arsenal. It's that simple. They had two men on Kolasinac. Game over. If you can pressure Leno enough, he will panic and just hoof it. Right? There's no calm composure about him. The positioning isn't strong enough for him to feel like he can do. Th he will hoof it if you pressure him. So what do they do? They pressure him. Right? More often than not, that leads to a 50-50. Then it's not about positioning. It's about composure, your touch, but mostly your willingness to get there and work. 50-50, how much do you actually want that? So they pressure Leno. Rice was absolutely brilliant in the middle. He looks like a real prospect. Noble doing the crunching. You've got Diop, who looks like an absolute gem. And Felipe Anderson working out like an absolute dream. Wow. He was walking to Arsenal. For Felipe, Diop, Nasri. They walk into Arsenal's first team. And if Guendouzi starts, surely Declan Rice does as well. That's four players at West Ham's 11 that would get into Arsenal's 11. What's going on here, mate? What's going on? I'm actually questioning whether I would take Fabianski over Leno as well. I'm not sure what's going on here. We've become cutback FC, predictable as you like. And that is not to take anything away from West Ham today. It's not. I'm just trying to touch on all the points and really question what I'm seeing here because we have no choice but to trust what Gazidis has left us with and as the man ran away I'm just slightly worried I mean Declan Rice even like when Doozy we know he can be good right we know he can be anyone with the brain can see that very confident but the audacity of turning up to Arsenal Football Club and thinking that you can get away with starting Guendouzi continuously. He is one of the most important players in our side, lads. That, to me, shows a little bit of naivety. He is a very snappable child, right? And you're putting him next to the liability that is Granit Xhaka without the protection of Torreira. It's a no from me. Sorry, it's a no. So, 
it's been very interesting watching the reaction. And this is a blame game of some sorts, I guess, right? Someone always has to be at fault. And I don't know who I'm picking. I don't even know. There's so many people here. <laughs> who are you picking? And on what basis? Because I will give praise where it's due. But when people said, we've got our Arsenal back. Look at the work rate. Look at the strength. Gas. You're actually gassed. All right? we, we got quite lucky. We had one recognisable pattern of play. And we strung together a few wins against mediocre teams like Carabag and Brentford. Let's be realistic. <sighs> For today... I'm sorry, I know it's a freebie season, but I have to look at Emery today and say, no, 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 you got it wrong. No, you got it wrong. Both tactically and through team selection. You've had nearly eight months as well, right? I'm questioning how we look worse defensively than last season when you were brought in to stabilise that very thing. I love the way he came out in the press conference and said we can't afford basically to buy anyone. Um, but I also love the reaction to this. Like, we haven't been going through this for the last God knows how many years. Like, Emery is suddenly the, the, the victim here. Um, have you just realised that we got no money? Or did they lie to you when you got the gig? You know, I'm thinking about more direct things about this result, not reactionary spur-of-the-moment things that lead back to Cronky. I know we can get on to that in a second, but why did it take you 65 minutes to realise that seven at the back wasn't actually creating anything when we'd had one shot and no corners in the first half? Come on now. This is basic stuff. Regardless of the mess they've left or the injuries that we've got or the problems at hand, with the players at your disposal, we should be beating West Ham United. I can't even blame Aubameyang. You know, he's a goal poacher, lads. The guy's a goal poacher. He lives off tappings. Yeah. I love the guy. I've been I made a video six years ago. Go back on the channel, transfer players that Arsenal need to buy. Aubameyang is in there. Saint Etienne striker. I know about this guy. He's a tap in merchant, capable of much more, but he feeds off the movement inside the box. You just have to give the bloody ball to him, right? He's not a false nine or this right wing you're playing at the end. What's going on here? Buy a winger. Go and buy a winger. Bring Reese Nelson back. What are you doing? Forcing it like this, playing two strikers up front when we've got no creative... There's no one feeding them behind. I can't be mad at Iwobi either. Right, who's, who is breaking the lines and creating? Iwobi. How can I be mad at Iwobi? The guy's trying his best and he's improved massively. But is he to blame? No, there's levels to this. And the fans' expectation of what Arsenal Football Club should be is not on Iwobi's level right now. He's working so hard. You cannot take anything away from the guy. But common sense tells me you choose an Ozil quality player or a Ramsey quality player over an Iwobi. Common sense. Egos are getting in the way here or something else is going on. And when I say something else, we can go on to it. Stan. Wenger, Gazidis, who've all put us in this complete mess in the first place. And even that, it's just who we are. This is what we became when David Dean brought Stan Kroenke to Arsenal. I'm not sure that people are being realistic with their expectations of the club because it's a complete mess to a fan or a complete nightmare if you're dreaming, dreaming of us like signing £90 million players on a regular basis, sure, or buying our way to a title like Man City or Chelsea. It's not going to happen, lads. But to a money man, it's not a mess. Are you mad? This is a dreamy situation for the business-minded. We are the only 100% self-sustaining club in the Premier League, the only club with zero investment from the owner. And there's a reason why he, he has invested that money. People find it incredible that for some reason, right, listen, that a businessman whose asset has more than doubled in the short space of 10 years hasn't put his own money in. Use your fucking noggin, lads. Use your brains. Why would he? Why the actual would he? So, reality, reality check. Hashtag woke. Stay woke. Wake the fuck up. Yeah, hashtag set your alarms, hashtag ring the alarm, hashtag red flags everywhere. It's not going to change anytime soon either because where once we had a say, now he owns everything, every single bit. 
It almost goes without saying that every last drop is being used to get him loans to undertake bigger projects. That's how it works. We're now a cash cow. And because of the global popularity, because of the people are not going to stop buying stuff, the demand for merchandise, the excitement that a few new shiny kits are going to bring with Adidas, that a new player or two will bring. Because of that and how invested we are, because it's what we love, we are trapped. Which is why it's so incredibly important, not me ranting, that we make sure that we've made the right decision in terms of where we're going. Because if not, we're actually in grave danger of becoming Europa Dons for the foreseeable future. <laughs> we'll be better than the rest, but not quite as good as the best. That's not me being harsh. I am just seeing continually worrying red flags. I know this is going to take time for sure, but where are we going? Is he going to be backed? Is he actually going to be backed? We have dreams of him turning this club around and transforming the fortunes like Klopp did with Liverpool, but look at how much money they have spent. £70 million on a goalkeeper is more than we spent in our whole window on five players. There are levels to this. Levels. What level we're on, uh, I think we'll find out quite soon. And many people are convinced, have found out a long time ago. Did he know that before he was coming in? Did he see this job as a stopgap where he can kind of rebuild his own name for a couple of years or some kind of project where he can, you know, seriously turn us around in five or six? I don't know. What is our identity now? Because I'm... Um, Worried even that the sumptuous football that we've seen this season was just the last remnants of Wenger Paul and nothing to do with Emery. In fact, it's almost like he's even more determined than ever to drive that out of the club, out of the players as soon as possible. And I think more so than ever, people are beginning to realise that that was part of the reason they loved Arsenal. What is our identity now? Let me know your thoughts anyway. Um, it is a process and we have to trust it. Nothing wrong with questioning it though. And uh, I'm sure you've all got your own opinions. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. For now though, I've been you, Izzy, and this has been Question Time.